It's lovely to be back with you again. Sue and I always enjoy coming to Great Wakeru and to uh, lead a service for you. And I'd like to begin this morning by reading one of my favourite passages of Scripture. It's only very short, and then we'll begin a song that fits in, I think, so well with this passage. I'm going to read just a few verses from Psalm 145. And they read like this. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. And one generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendour of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. Folks, we are the they. We have that commission to share the goodness of God with the next generation. So let's stand and sing, tell out my soul. What are we going to tell out? The greatness of of the Lord. So let's stand and sing together this lovely hymn. something to drink to, uh, you know, cool you down a little bit. I'm sure, well, I know I've got a bottle of water up here and there's a couple of spares. So if anyone needs that, then I'm sure they'll be made available to you if you make it home. But it's great to be here this morning. It's great to know that we're here. Uh, have you said good morning to each other? Can you do that now very quickly? Just say morning, hi. Morning, nice morning. to see you here this morning. Yeah. Uh, now we've greeted one another, let's greet the Lord, because I really believe that he's here, and because he's here, that's what makes it all worthwhile. So let's pray, shall we? Let's talk to the Father. Father God, we want to thank you for the privilege that we have of being here this morning. 
Lord, we've come to give you all the praise and all the worship that's due your name because you are indeed a great and mighty God. Help us, Lord, to explore that a little bit more this morning. Help us to explore what it means to us personally, whether we're very young or whether we're old or whether we're somewhere in the middle, Lord. Help us to understand this morning just how precious and special we are to you and what an amazing God you are. So we ask that you be with us. Keep us safe, Lord. We've heard a lot about the dangers of this really hot weather. Help us to enjoy it, but help us to stay safe. And this morning in this building, help us to learn a little bit more about your amazing love and how we can share that with others. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. Well, well, like I said, you're all looking very, very splendid this morning. And um, a few minutes ago, you looked around and you greeted one another. When you did that, did you notice that we're all different? Did you notice that? Just have another look. Have a look at the person next to you and think about whether they look the same as you. Well, just have a look at me for a start then. Do I look like any of you? No, you're saying thank goodness for that, aren't you? Do you know what? The Bible teaches me that we are all different. But also that we are all very, very precious and special. Because God made each and every one of us. The Bible says in his own image. Now, let me just check. How many of you went into the bathroom this morning and brushed your teeth? Anybody not do that? <laughs> now, when you brushed your teeth, did you look in the mirror? Did you? And so you saw what you looked like, and I'm sure you young ladies, you put your makeup on, didn't you? Make sure you look tidy and smart and attractive for us boys. Yeah? When you looked at yourself in the mirror, you saw an image of yourself. The Bible says we're made in the image of God. You didn't actually see somebody who looks like God. Because the Bible tells us that God is very, very different from us. But when he made us, when he created us, he made us so that we have bits of us that are like him. His character. His personality. Who's good at art here? Who likes art and drawing and painting? Well, have you ever seen the sunrise in the morning? You know, there's a lovely song that who paints the skies? You know, God does that. He is amazing, the things that he does. And he made you very, very special. You know, sadly, there are some people who don't actually believe that. They believe something different. Let's watch a little, a little clip. Uh, a special, I brought a special guest along this morning to do an experiment. Who likes chemistry at home? Anyone like doing chemistry at school? Yeah. Well, we're going to do a bit of a chemistry experiment this morning. Here he is. I'll just take it back to the beginning. Yeah, here he is. My very special friend is. Hello. Today we are conducting a very important experiment. We are trying to create a human being by just using the ingredients that are in our human bodies. Here's my test tube. Here's my stir. We're going to begin with H2O, water. A considerable amount of our bodies is consists of H2O, water. Sometimes we can be regarded as carbon units. Here I have some carbon. Lots and lots of barbecue charcoal. Let's put that into the test tube and give it a good old stir. Did you know that our bones, our teeth, our fingernails and our toenails are made of calcium? So is this chalk? So into the pot it goes. Let's do the stir. In our bodies, there's also enough iron to make a nail 15 centimetres in length. So let's put that in there. That's why like some of us have my next contraction. Here we have some salt. In our bodies, there's lots of salt. Don't believe me? Next time you do some play here and start sweating. Put your finger under your armpit and taste it. Don't do that to anyone else's armpit. Only your own. Just the same. In our bodies we have lots and lots of phosphorus, that's the brown stuff, on the end of these matches. In fact, we have enough to make about 2,000 matches. I haven't got 2,000, but I'll put them all. 
And there's also sufficient fat in our bodies to make at least seven bars of soap. I only have the one I bought that in. Uh, in my body, there's probably about 27 bars of soap, but never mind. Now, what we could do is give this a jolly good stir, put it in the microwave for however long it was, or we could pop it in the oven at gas marker for, I don't know what, two, three, four, 24 million years? Would we make a human being just with the ingredients? I'm not so sure we would, because there's more to being human than just the chemicals that make us up. Actually, this lot would cost less than five pounds. How much are you worth? A fiver? Or more? Good question. How much are you worth? A fiver or more? Who thinks they're worth more than a fiver? <laughs> Hands up if you think you're worth more than five pounds. Every hand should be up. <laughs> should be, yeah. really, isn't it? And who thinks they're just a bunch of chemicals? Well, who thinks you're a bit more than that? You are a bit more than that. Do you know what? Let's have a look. Because you see, here's one I made earlier. And nothing's happened except, you know, when I put the chalk in, it started fizzing a bit. You see, we can't make human beings just by putting all the chemicals together. Because we're created made in the image of God. And we are all very, very special and precious. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. But first of all, I'm going to read you what it says in the Bible. Another one of my favourite passages, Psalm 139. And just a few verses. It says, for you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and you, you were created in my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. In other words, we were made, where? In our mummy's tummies. Yeah? That's how we were created, by a miracle of birth. A miracle of conception. Created by God. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know them full well. My frame, that's my bits, your bits, my frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body, and all my da all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. What that really means is that God knows every single thing about you and about me because he created us. And we're very, very special and precious. We're unique. The Bible tells us that he counts the very hairs on our heads. Did you know that? Now, I haven't got a lot, so you might think he doesn't have to do a lot of counting. Well, actually, he does. Because, you know, when I go into the shower, guess what happens? When I have a share, shower, a few more drop out every morning. So that means he has to have a recount every day. <laughs> but what it really means is that every single day, 24-7, every single minute, every single day, God is thinking and caring about you. Because he loves you. Because you are wonderfully and fearfully made. And you know what? We've got a song we'd like you to sing all about that. And, and we've got, got some actions. Well, we're going to do the other song first. Oh, are we? Yeah, we're going to do the other one. We'll do that first. And then we'll okay. Go. <laughs> right. I'm going to have to teach you the actions for this one because Sue's going to play the music. All right? So, uh, what I'd like you to do in a minute, I know it's very hot, so you might be a bit reluctant to do this, but never mind. I want to see if you can do it with me. Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do that? Can you do that? Not bad. Let's try again. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, sorry, mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. 
the rivers are his, the mountains are his, and the stars are his handiwork too. My body so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. Alright? CSI, if any of you watch that program. I used to go to the scenes of crimes and uh, look for fingerprints and all the other forensic evidence that makes it possible to detect criminals. And a lot of things I learned when I was doing that. You probably know a little bit about fingerprints, don't you? Yeah, we've all got fingerprints, haven't we? Look at your fingers from here. And every single print is different. is different. That's right. Nobody's got the same. But do you know what? They're fearfully and wonderfully designed because the print that's on there is different from the print on there. That's different from the print on there and different from the print on there and different from the print on there. And different from there and there and there and there. Every single pattern on everybody's fingers is different. And they're different from each finger as well. We won't, we won't do this because it's very hot and it will be very smelly. If we were all to take our shoes and socks off, and if the ladies would take their tights off and looked at the bottom of our feet, we would see that they've all got little patterns on the top put there. And they are all completely different as well. And did you know, girls, did you know that everybody kisses different? Did you know that? So when you start kissing boys, they all kiss differently. And you girls, you, you all kiss differently as well. Because not a lot of people know this, but on our lips, we've got little designs, little patterns that God put there. And they're all different. Nobody kisses like you. Ladies, no one kisses quite like your husband. Men, no one kisses quite like your wife. Because they're all different. They've all got different patterns on them. Isn't that amazing? It's incredible. We're really special. And um, someone tell me, how many senses have we got? Can someone tell me? Anybody know? Five. Can someone tell me one of those senses? Just one of them. Just one. Yes. Yes. We can hear. Can you all hear me this morning? Am I speaking loud enough? Do does, does some people find it a bit more difficult to hear than others? Yeah. I know I do. Because I'm going a bit deaf. Uh, what's another one of those senses? Yeah, do you know one? Our eyes. What do we do with our eyes? We see. Yeah, and you can see that uh, my eyes are, are not working properly, are they? That's why I have to wear these. We're going to hear a story in a minute about a man whose eyes, sadly, didn't work at all. But what about the other three senses? We've missed three out. What are the other three? Do you know one of them? What's it? Our mouth. What do we do with our mouths? We eat, yeah. And when we're eating, what do we do? What do we do? That's right, we can taste things, can't we? We can taste nice things that taste sweet, or even nice things that taste a little bit sour. What else can we do when we taste them? Because who likes hot things? <coughs> like curry and chilli. Mm. Who likes cold things like lettuce and tomatoes? 
They're nice on days like this, aren't they? We can taste different tastes, sweet and sour, all those lovely things. So we can hear things, we can see things, we can taste things. How many is that? Lost count. Three, Three two, to go. go. Oh yes, we can smell, can't we? Who likes smelling nice smells? Do you like it? Are you ladies? Are you are you wearing perfume this morning? Oh, I was going to have a little sniff. <laughs> I like the smell of perfume, but are there smells that we don't like so much? Oh yes. Oh, oh yes. Pig farms. Pig farms. <laughs> if you remember last time, cesspits. <laughs> they don't smell great either. They don't smell great. But you know, we, we've got that sense, haven't we, that we can use. Um, and what's the one we've missed out? I can't remember. What's the one we've missed out? Who hasn't had a go yet? You've had a go. Had Who hasn't had a go? Have you had a go yet? Yeah. Do you want to tell me what the last one is? No. Go on then. Touch. Touch. Oh, that no, happens. I think this. We can touch things. And what do they tell us when we touch things? What do they tell us? They tell us if something is hot. Yeah, very good. So we won't be putting our radiators on this weekend, will we? Because it's already very hot. Uh, they can tell us if they're nice and cool, can't they? Yeah. Uh, they can tell us if something is rough or smooth. Isn't it amazing what our bodies can do? Well, like I said, sadly, we're going to, well, not sadly, hopefully we're going to tell you a story this morning about a man who didn't have one of those senses. Very sadly for him. But he was determined to make sure that that changed. Here we go. Okay, as we tell you the story, Chris is going to hold some boards up. And when he holds the board up, we want you to call out what's on the board. Really loudly. Okay, so if you hold this one up, we want you to call out... <coughs> Jesus. Jesus. Brilliant. Very good. If he holds the next board up, you say... Happy. And the last one says... Wonderful, you'll get right here. Right. I might ask you to shout a little bit louder when no, we get I going. No, I will tell you to go to the <laughs> oh, right. I will get there, yeah. Right, one day, about 2,000 years ago, Jesus was walking with his disciples and a crowd of people towards the town of Jericho. Sitting in his usual place on the roadside outside of Jericho was Bartimaeus. He sat there begging for money. Help me. He could not see people as they passed him by, but he could hear the sound of their footsteps as they walked along the dusty road. So he knew when to call out for money. Help me. Help me. But on this particular day, the sounds were different. There were many more feet passing by. Crowds of people were talking excitedly and laughing as they entered the city. Bartimaeus cried out, Why are there so many people on the road? It's because... Jesus. Jesus is here, some of the people told him. He's coming to Jericho. Now Bartimaeus had heard about Jesus. And he knew that Jesus. And for miracles, maybe he could make him see. So at once Bartimaeus jumped up and began shouting. 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 All right, are you ready? Jesus, help me. Bartimaeus wanted to hear. Bring him to me. 
Some people took, took Bartimaeus by the arm and led him to Jesus. What do you want me to do? Jesus. Asked him. Bartimaeus replied, Jesus, please help me to see again. Immediately, Jesus <laughs> answered, Bartimaeus, because you trust me, you will see. All of a sudden, Bartimaeus man looked around. <coughs> he could see. He saw people, he saw the sky, he saw the sunshine, he saw trees, grass, the city walls, houses. He was no longer blind. He could see everything. It was amazing. Bartimaeus was overjoyed. He continued down the road with Jesus and the rest of the crowd. None of them were going to be blind. blind. Yeah, they were so excited as they went along the road thanking and praising God for making Bartimaeus see the game. Well done everybody and thank you for helping me <laughs> to get that right. And thank you Sue for helping me to get it right as well. <laughs> so what was that guy's name again? What was his name? Bartimaeus. Do you know what that means? Because the B-A-R at the beginning means that he had a dad. We all got dads, but they used to use their dad's names to say who he was the son of. So the bar means that he was son of somebody. He was son of Timaeus. Timaeus. Bartimaeus. Okay. Now, that's a very long word. So you've already known that he's now Bartimaeus or Bar the son of Timaeus, all right? So we're just going to use the B-A-R-T, okay? So we're going to call him Bart, okay? B-A-R-T, Bart. Not Bart Simpson, this is Bartimaeus, okay? But I want you to think about that name for a minute, and we're going to spell out some important things about Bartimaeus. You know, the first thing I think we can learn about Bartimaeus is that he was bold. Did you say that? Bold. bold. He wasn't going to allow himself to be bullied by those other people in the crowd. Bartimaeus knew that he needed Jesus to help him. And he believed that Jesus could help him. And he realised this was his moment. The man who could help him, Jesus, the Son of God, the worker of amazing miracles, was working by. So he was bold. He was going to cry out, Jesus, help me, help me. He wasn't going to let anybody stop him. And you know what? I think that's really important. Because sometimes we need people to help us. And if we know that, we shouldn't let anybody try and put us off. We should be bold. We should be bold. And know when to do something very important. That's right. Now I've got the letter A, and that stands for ask. Because Bartimaeus was prepared to ask for help. He knew exactly what he wanted Jesus to do for him. He simply said, I want to see. And Jesus was able to make him see, which is fantastic. Now, we might not be blind like Bartimaeus, but often we do have problems. And sometimes we can hold them in. Maybe, for example, you might be with someone bullying you at school. And it is important that when those situations happen, that we ask for help. Maybe you've upset somebody and you need to ask them to forgive them. You know, we can't sort problems out unless we ask for help. So asking is very important too. We're going to think about asking a bit later on, but we're going to go to the R now. The R. And that stands for being real. Being real. Bartimaeus had a real problem. He was blind. He couldn't see. Do you know what else I mean by being real? There was a time when I couldn't, well, when I struggled to see. And something got in the way. Do you know what that was? It was my pride. Because at the time, I didn't wear glasses, you see. And I didn't really want to go and have to wear glasses. For a start, they cost a lot of money. But also, I thought, mm, they're going to change my appearance. My pride got in the way. But the trouble was, my arms weren't long enough. Because every, so every time I went to read something, I had to go and get it further away before I could read it. Does anybody here know that problem that I'm talking about? When your arms aren't long enough to read what's on the page. So I had to get real and I had to acknowledge that yes, I had a problem. And I needed to go to my optician and ask for help. 
And he did. He helped me by making a pair of glasses for me. I had to get real. If I hadn't got real, if I hadn't asked, then I still would be standing in front of you this morning without glasses on, and I wouldn't be able to read my Bible, and I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to see your lovely faces, would I? Because I wouldn't have the right glasses on. And to finish with, most importantly, saying thank you. You know, Bartimaeus at the end did say thank you. He followed after Jesus, thanking and praising God that he made him see. And it's always important to remember to say thank you, particularly when we've asked for help or somebody has helped us. Thank you, very important. We've already done that. Not we're, going to do that. we're going to do that now. Right. You know, those people in that crowd who were shouting at Bartimaeus to. Yeah. You know the reason they said that? Because he was just a poor beggar sitting there in rags. They thought, he's not important. Jesus isn't going to be wanting to be bothered by him. He's a nobody. He's not special. He's not important. He's just a beggar. But you know, the truth is that Jesus believes that we are all precious. We're all special. Nobody is a nobody. You know, sometimes we say things to people and sometimes we do things to people that makes them sound as if they're not as important as us. They're not as special as us. Like we say, oh, you're a nobody. We don't, we don't think about it. But this song tells us that nobody's a nobody. Let me see if I can uh, do the action Are you ready? I want you to join in with me. And what's going to happen is Sue's going to start this song really slowly and then she's going to get faster. And we want to see if you can as well. Alright? So it goes like this. Nobody's a nobody. Can you do this with me? Nobody's a nobody. Believe me. Because it's true. Nobody's a nobody. Especially not you. What is somebody who you think needs to be cheered up and encouraged? Because they're not a nobody. Alright? You, got, you grown ups can do this as well, because you know, sometimes you some, say things that aren't very nice to people, or you do things that aren't very nice to people as well. So let's try that again. You ready? Nobody's a nobody, believe me, because it's true. Nobody's a nobody, especially not you. Nobody's a nobody, and God wants us to see that everybody's somebody. Now you can encourage yourself. That means especially not me. Alright? So he's one of yourselves. Alright? Now we, who likes Mickey Mouse? Who's heard of Mickey Mouse? Yo, yeah, Disney. He's a cartoon, isn't he? But we're not cartoons. I'm no cartoon. I'm human. I've got feelings. Oh, treat me right, okay? I'm no cartoon, I'm human. I've got feelings, treat me right. I'm not a superhero with super strength and might. I'm not a mega pop star, if you get all of the microphones. I'm not a mega pop star or a super athlete. But did you know I'm special? In fact, I'm quite unique. You do that? You look just like a mum, are you from Africa? Okay? Shall we, shall we stand up because we've been sitting out there? Let's have a go at this.
yourselves a big round of applause. Well done. Take a seat. Take a seat. Right. I'm going to read another passage from the scriptures now. And uh, I'll sit my Bible. And this is another story about how Jesus did something very, very special for somebody who had a different problem to Bartimaeus. But nevertheless, it was a problem that Jesus was able to solve. I'm going to be reading from Luke chapter 5, verses 12 to 16. While Jesus was in one of their towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, don't tell anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about Jesus spread all the more, so the crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places where he prayed. You know, I really love that story. And you know what? I think it's a, a bit like the story of Bartimaeus because Jesus met somebody who had a real need. And if we look at the pictures up on the screen, let's have a look. For the last two, two and a half years, we've been going through something horrible, a horrible disease, a horrible illness called COVID-19. Have we all heard of COVID-19? Have you, you, you youngsters heard about it as well? Did you have some time off school because of it as well? Yeah? You know the reason you had to have time off school? It was because people were really, really afraid of what might happen if they caught COVID-19. Because it made people very, very ill. And in fact, it made some people Ill, so ill that they died. It was a horrible disease, and it still is. There are still lots of people who are dying because they've got COVID-19. Still lots of people in hospital because they've got COVID-19. And it makes people afraid. It makes people so afraid that instead of going about their, way, their, their normal ways, have you seen people having to wear masks where they go around so they don't breathe out any germs. Have you ever had to put gloves on? Or I know what you were told to do, weren't you? You were told to sing happy birthday while you were washing your hands. Do you remember you had to see happy birthday twice so you made sure your hands were really, really clean. And that's because of this horrible disease. And you know, we weren't allowed to get close to one another. I couldn't come within two metres of other person, other people, because it was thought to be so dangerous. And people are still doing that today. It's a horrible disease. And you know, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was around, COVID-19 was around, but this horrible disease called leprosy was around. And you know what? That made people very, very afraid of people who had leprosy. They kept away from them. They didn't want to be anywhere, anybody, anywhere near anybody who had got leprosy because they might have had spots on their skin or bits of their skin might be falling off. And it was one of those diseases that was really, really easy to catch. And not only did it disfigure people, sometimes it killed people. It was a bit like COVID-19. It was a really, really horrible disease. And people were really, really afraid of anybody who had leprosy. Do you know what? If you were married to somebody and you got leprosy, you weren't allowed to live with them anymore. You had to move out of the house. You had to stay isolated from them. You would lose all your friends. You would lose all your families. 
you would lose your job. And you know, very sadly, some people have been like that during COVID-19. You have to stay in a different part of the house. You couldn't go and visit your elderly parents or anything like that. Even if they were in a, you know, even if they were about to die, you still couldn't go and see them. It was really horrible. But leprosy was like that. Nobody wanted to be anywhere near you. In fact, if you had leprosy, sometimes you had to wear a sign around your neck saying leper. Or had a bell that you rang to warn people that you were coming. Or even shout out, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. And when people heard that, they stayed away from you. But this guy, this leper, like Bart, he heard that Jesus was coming. And he believed that Jesus could make him better. And so he went up to Jesus. He was taking a big risk because, you know, being in other people's company, well, they, they didn't want to be there. He, Jesus might have run away. The people with Jesus could have run away. But this man really believed that Jesus could make him better. So what did he do? He ran up to Jesus and he fell face down on the ground because he was really, really humble. He wasn't like me with my pride, you know, not wanting to get new glasses. He knew he had a problem and he really believed that Jesus could heal him. So he came in what we call humility and faith. He threw himself on the ground and he begged Jesus, Jesus, if you are willing, you can make me clean. He was asking Jesus to heal him. And he was believing what he said because he said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Not you might be able to make me clean, but you can. So he came with faith. Do you know what? Do you know what Jesus said? Well, first of all, we read it, didn't he? He didn't run away. He reached out and he touched the untouchable. That was something that he never ever did. He never ever reached out and touched the leper because people were so afraid that you might catch that disease. But you see, Jesus loves us so much that he does the things that nobody expects. He loves us so much he can do the things that nobody else is prepared to do. And he's willing to do that for us as well. Whatever our problems are, whatever our needs are, he's willing to reach out and touch you this morning and to help you with whatever your problem is. Whether it's a physical sickness and illness or something else, might be spiritual, might be emotional. Jesus this morning is willing to reach out and touch you right where you are and deal with that problem right now. I am willing, is what Jesus said. And this morning, Jesus is ready and willing to say to you, I am willing. And you know what? Just like Bartimaeus, that leper, was healed completely of his leprosy. It wasn't that Jesus said he's a fantastic doctor with all the medicine that he needs. What it is, is Jesus is different. Jesus is the Son of God. The God who made us. The God who created us. In fact, the Bible tells us it was Jesus who created us. He made us exactly who we are. And this morning, just like Bartimaeus, just like that leper, Jesus wants to reach out to you and touch you. Do you know why? Because he is a good, good God. And he has been good to you. Can I just ask, how old are you? Seven. Seven. Is anybody here younger than seven? Anybody, uh, anybody 87 here today? Anybody older than 87? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to do something now. May I ask you how old you are? 88. 88! <laughs> oh, you beat me by one. 
Well, you didn't beat me by the way. Doesn't matter how young we are. Doesn't matter how old we are. Doesn't matter who we've been, what we've done. Jesus wants to reach out and touch you this morning in a very, very special, precious way. Why? Because he is a good God. And the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And Jesus said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives and everyone who knocks and everyone who seeks finds and to him who knocks the door will be open let's pray shall we loving heavenly father we thank you for your goodness we thank you that you are a good good god who is faithful and who created us who made us in your image and lord we know that that image was spoiled by our sinful nature but father you're so good you're so gracious you're so merciful that you sent jesus so that we might be forgiven and so we might be restored if we put our faith and our trust in him and ask for forgiveness so father we thank you for your willingness to reach out and touch us no matter who we are no matter what we've done no matter where we've been you are willing to reach out and clean us, cleanse us from anything that's unworthy of you, anything that's sinful, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that you can put it on because of who you are. So this morning, Father, I just pray that if anybody here needs a touch from you, that Lord, that they will be bold enough to ask, they'll be real about what their problems are and willing to ask you, and Lord, when they see your work in their lives, I pray, Lord, that they will be thankful and they'll give glory to you. And as a result, like we sang at the very beginning of this morning, they will tell them what you've done in their lives so that others might find that goodness for themselves. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen.